a boat can travel 10.2 kilometers upstream in 51 if the speed of the current is one fifth of the speed of the boat in still water how much distance in kilometers can the boat travel downstream in 48 minutes right so basically upstream case has been given to us right distance covered is 10.2 kilometers in 51 minutes he's asking us to find out how much will that boat cover downstream right upstream it is 10.2 in 51 minutes how much will it cover downstream in 48 minutes right how much will it cover downstream in 48 minutes the same boat right and then in the middle he says the speed of the current which means the speed of the water flow right is one fifth of the speed of the boat it is one fifth of the speed of the boat okay now i mean if you have to eliminate options the only option that we can eliminate is 4.8 here because see you know that in 51 minutes if it has covered 10.2 kilometers upstream it will cover more than 10.2 kilometers downstream right if it has covered 10.2 kilometers in 51 minutes upstream and then 51 minutes downstream it will cover more than 10 point but here it is 48 minutes downstream so i mean it should be somewhere around 10.2 is what we can say i mean nothing beyond that it cannot be 4.8 it cannot be so less and remaining options are closed so let us do the full solution See, one point that we need to note here is the formula. We know the formula for upstream and downstream travel of a boat, right? Speed of the boat minus speed of the current equals to distance by time. And speed of the boat plus speed of the current is equal to distance by time. This is for upstream, the first formula. You don't have to write this in, in the exam there. I'm just, you know, uh, repeating the basic formula here, right? This is upstream case. Upstream. In upstream, you have to make difference of speeds, and this is a downstream case, right? So some of the speeds. Now, <coughs> if you see, the question says speed of the current is one fifth of speed of the boat. So basically, this SC can be replaced by SB by pi, right? Similarly, here also SC can be replaced by SB by pi because speed of the current is one fifth of the speed of the boat. So one variable is reduced if you replace SB SC with SB, or you, if you write SC in terms of SB, one variable will get reduced. And it will make our life simple. So read the first equation now. I mean, if you see, it is what? SB minus SB by 5. SB by 5. So you know that 4SB by 5 equals to distance by time. How much is the distance? 10.2 divided by time is 51 minutes. Second equation, SB plus SB by 5. So it's like X plus X by 5. It will be 6X by 5, right? So 6SB by 5 equals to the distance that will travel has to be found out, has to be found, found out. Time given is 48 minutes. Now, strictly speaking, this first equation is not balanced. Why? Distance is given in kilometers, time is given in minutes. You know, for us to solve this question of distance, you should convert time to hour, hours. Minutes have to be converted to hours. Similarly, here also, minutes have to be converted to hours. But then, a smarter way of solving this question would be to divide the two equations. See, what we will basically do is find out SB from this one. See, the whole idea is this now. If you look at first equation, there is only one variable, SB. So find SB from the first equation, speed of the boat. Substitute that speed of the boat in the second equation and get the distance. Yes or no? That's the whole idea. I mean, conventionally, that's what we need to do. Find out the speed of the boat from the first equation. Substitute that speed in the second equation and get the distance. But instead of doing all this, a smart person will simply divide these two equations. So what happens? I mean, you will not be doing this in the exam. Clearing it all is not possible. But then we are dividing the two equations. Are you getting it? So upstream speed by downstream speed is equal to upstream distance by upstream time divided by downstream distance by downstream time. What happens in this case is even without calculating the speed of the boat, we can find out the distance. So one step is reduced straight. Are you getting it? One step is reduced. And because we are comparing kilometers with kilometers, minutes with minutes, conversions also is not needed. See, some of you may still argue that why are we not converting minutes to hours? How do you convert minutes to hours? Divide by 60. So you'll divide 51 by 60. You'll divide 48 also by 60. Both will get cancelled. So why do you want to be sure? So the advantage of this method or this idea here is we, we need not find out the speed of the boat. Right? We need not find out the speed of the boat. Now 5 and 5 in the denominator gets cancelled. This is like uh, cancel these two. This is 3 into 17. This is 3 into 16. So a lot of things have got simplified. right? So what do we get here now? See, 4 by 6, 4 by 6, or it's like 2 by 3. You get it? On the left hand side, we have 2 by 3 equals to, look at the right hand side, 10.2 by 17 
Now this d by 16 when taken in the numerator will become 16 by d. Solve this now. See, you know that 17 into 6, 17 into 6 is uh, 1 or 2. So 17 into 0. 0.6 will be 10.2. All, all are different calculations. And, and now do the remaining part of it, right? So this 2 goes 8 times, right? 8 into 0. 0.6 is 4.8. 4.8 into 3 is 14.4. So I can say the distance is equal to 14.4 kilometers. Now, how do we know that distance here is in kilometers? Because the distance in numerator was in kilometers. So obviously this distance also will be in kilometers. Again, cut down the number of steps. I was explaining it while solving, so it has taken so much of time. When you do it yourself, you will get it really quick. All right, 14.4 kilometers, option 5 is the answer.